A reading from the second book of Samuel. The Lord spoke to Nathan and said, Go, tell my servant David, When your time comes and you rest with your ancestors, I will raise up your heir after you, sprung from your loins, and I will make his kingdom firm. It is he who shall build a house for my name, and I will make his royal throne firm forever. I will be a father to him, and he shall be a son to me. Your house and your kingdom shall endure forever before me. Your throne shall stand firm forever. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, it was not through the law that the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants that he would inherit the world, but through the righteousness that comes from faith. For this reason, it depends on faith so that it may be a gift, and the promise may be guaranteed to all his descendants, not to those who only adhere to the law, but to those who follow the faith of Abraham, who is the father of all of us. As it is written, I have made you father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God, in whom he believed, who gives life to the dead, and calls into being what does not exist. He believed, hoping against hope, that he would become the father of many nations, according to what was said. Thus, shall your descendants be? That is why it was credited to him as righteousness.
Can it be said about me that I am a just person? Or do I at time practice selective integrity? It's good for us to think about this from time to time to look at Joseph as a model and ask ourselves, am I a just person? Do I live with integrity? The second thing about St. Joseph is that he did not take joy in seeing the pain of others. St. Joseph was unwilling to put the Blessed Virgin Mary to shame, despite learning that she was with child before they were united as husband and wife. We must ask, ask ourselves, when I happen to suspect others of doing wrong, what is my immediate reaction? Do I keep things to myself? Or do I begin to gossip and announce my suspicions or fears to others? Hopefully, we can be like St. Joseph and allow time to understand what is really happening when we have suspicions or concerns. Thirdly, St. Joseph was obedient to God at his own expense. We are told that Joseph woke from sleep, as did the angel, as the angel did as the angel of the Lord commanded. He agreed to play the role of a foster father to the Son of God. This meant that he agreed to live as a celibate for the rest of his life for the sake of Jesus Christ. His own form of celibacy would be even more demanding given that unlike other celibates, he would have to live in the same house with the Blessed Virgin Mary. But God asks us to make a sacrifice. Are we willing? For I sometimes say to God, it's too much to ask. I'm weak. But we can always look at St. Joseph to find a bottle to strengthen us. Fourthly, St. Joseph was a man of faith. It takes great faith to agree to do what Joseph did for God out of love for Jesus and Mary. Did you notice that God only spoke to him through dreams? It takes great faith believe that what we see in our dreams is not simply a figment of our imagination. It takes faith to believe that a young woman will conceive without knowing that. Does my mind limit what God can do? Do I really believe that with God all things are possible? Am I willing to act based on what God reveals to me daily through my study of Scripture and through my prayer? In the second reading today, St. Paul reminds us of Abraham, a man of faith, who hoped against hope that he would be the father of many nations, and he was not disappointed in the end. St. Joseph, too, was a kind of Abraham. He believed the message of the angel and agreed to be the earthly father of Jesus Christ, this way giving credence to the prophecy of David, which we read about in today's first reading. And offspring from the house of David, whose mouth shall be established forever. As we celebrate this beautiful solemnity of St. Joseph, particularly if you are a man, I encourage you to look to St. Joseph as a model and a guide. Being a man is not easy, being a woman is not easy. But for men, look to St. Joseph in particular to help guide you in your family life the way that you treat other people, and the way that you respond to God. So let us pray to our Heavenly Father that He may help all of us emulate the virtues of St. Joseph, and may St. Joseph continue to intercede for us as we seek to trust God and accept His holy will in our lives. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.